The foundation and the roof are usually the most expensive parts of building a house. In this video, we're talking about the cost of the foundation. Why do some foundations cost 40,000 Rand and others over 100,000 Rand? What's the actual difference? Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found the space. If you've been following the journey so far, welcome back. You know that I'm in the planning stages of building a home for me and my child, and I'm sharing everything along the way to making that dream a reality. If you're also on a similar journey, consider subscribing to the channel and join us live every weekend at 4 p.m. for more in-depth discussions about the journey of building a home. All right, before we get started, I just want to say I'm not a structural engineer or a geotechnical expert. I'm just a mom trying to build a house one step at a time. This video isn't expert advice. It's me sharing a question I asked myself and some of what I've learned so far. So please, if you're watching this, verify this information with a professional. If you're not sure what kind of foundation your plot needs, speak to someone qualified to assess your soil. All right, we all know that the foundation is the structure that the house is built on, that holds everything together. But here's the thing, there isn't just one type of foundation. There are different types of foundation for different types of soil. You can't really choose your foundation the same way you choose the style of your roof. The soil chooses, which means your plot of land plays a huge role in what's possible and what's safe. Some types of soil are sandy, some are clay heavy, some are rocky. And all of that matters because the wrong foundation on the wrong soil is a recipe for future cracks, damp walls, or worse. In this video, we're only going to compare the cost of two types of foundation. The first one being the strip foundation. You may be familiar with this type of foundation where the builder marks out where the foundation is going to be and then digs the trenches, places reinforcing steel and pours in the concrete for the strip fittings. The foundation walls are then built and the foundation is then filled and compacted. Sometimes a slab can be added on top and sometimes not. If you're building an average sized house on a fairly level land with decent soil, nothing too rocky, nothing too wet, around the size of 80 square meters to 100 square meters, then a traditional strip foundation with no slab can cost you around 31 to 40,000 rand. This type of foundation is often cheaper because it uses less concrete overall compared to the foundation we're going to talk about next. So with this foundation, if your soil is good, and your house is light, not too big, it does the job. It can be all you need. But here's the thing, cheaper doesn't mean always cheap. A strip foundation can become expensive depending on, for example, the size of your house. A larger house, for instance, means longer trenches, which means more digging and more concrete. If the soil is unstable, you might need to dig deeper or reinforce the trenches. And if you're adding a slab, that will automatically increase the cost because a slab needs a lot more concrete and the cost of ready mixed concrete can be enough to give you a heart attack. But before you get a heart attack, let's talk about the next one. The second foundation is the raft foundation. I watched a video recently where this type of foundation was used and I thought it would be helpful from an educational point of view to highlight why it cost over 100,000 Rand. Let's start with the reason why this foundation was used. The owner mentioned that a geotechnical report found that the area is on dolomite, which means that the soil is prone to sinkholes. Because of that, a strip foundation wouldn't have been safe or suitable for the site. So a raft foundation was recommended instead. 
They didn't mention the size of the house in the video, but based on the amount of concrete that was used for this foundation, about 36 cubic meters, we can estimate that the house is about 140 something square meters. So making it maybe a three bedroom, two bathroom house. Now let's talk about costs. Raft foundations are more expensive than strip foundations because they use more concrete, more reinforcing steel, and they require precise engineering. It's not something you can just freestyle. If this foundation cost over 100,000 Rand, then for a smaller house, say between 80 square meters to about 100 square meters, you're looking at a foundation cost of around 70 to 80,000 Rand. Depending on the soil report, the cost of ready mixed concrete, reinforcing steel, and labor. It's not a small cost, but it gives you long term peace of mind if you find yourself building a house on this kind of land. If you want to see the full video, head over to the channel DIY Builder ZA. It's a great example of adapting your foundation to the soil conditions and protecting your future home from underground surprises. So how do you choose? Like I said in the beginning, the soil chooses. So if you're in an area where the soil is wet or clay heavy, you will use a different foundation than if you were in an area where the soil is dry. If you end up building your house on a strip foundation, here are a few extra steps you can take to prevent damp problems in your walls later on. First, make sure your builder uses a DPM or damp proof membrane. This is a heavy plastic membrane that is placed under the slab or the screed. It helps prevent the moisture from the ground from creeping into the concrete. You can also add waterproofing paint to the walls of the foundation. I'll write the name of this paint on the screen. It acts like a shield, repelling water that might build up in the soil, especially during rainy seasons. Also make sure to add DPC or damp proof course. That's the layer built into the wall just above ground level. It acts like a moisture barrier in your bricks. Skipping this or using poor materials is a common mistake that leads to damp patches and peeling paint later. So very important. Lastly, be mindful of the ground level around your house. If the soil slopes toward your walls or water pools or collects near the foundation, that's a sign of trouble. Some people build a slight step at the base of the wall to lift the wall a bit higher from the ground. That small detail can make a big difference. These are important things to keep in mind before you even start your foundation. This is because most areas, especially rural areas, have poor drainage. That means water stays around your house for a long time after it rains and ends up causing damage. As you've seen with the two examples, foundations are not a one size fits all. Like I said in the beginning, you don't need to be an expert in the building process, but you need to know what you're paying for. That's the point of these videos. So that if a builder gives you a quote, you at least understand what's going into it. So I'll keep sharing what I learn as I go so we can all build smarter. If you've used any of these foundations or got a quote for them, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what it cost and whether you do it the same way again. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, we go live every weekend, Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. to unpack the building journey and support each other. In the next video, we're going to compare the cost of different types of bricks, from the stock bricks to the maxi bricks, the clay bricks, and even the Mambara bricks. So join me for that. Thanks so much again for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.